Today, guys, we're gonna be training a sales team of all women reps who have really never knocked doors, which is super exciting. I'm excited to work with them and I'm excited to crush it and do unbelievable things at the door in front of them and show them what's possible. One of the biggest things that changed my life in sales was when I actually saw a world-class top performer in front of me sell because up until that point, it was all just like theory crafting of like, do this, do this. But there, there's so much nuance and body language and tonality and just little micro things that you only notice when you're in front of someone that's world-class. The first day I ever sold door to door, I sold in front of someone, the manager was absolutely amazing. And he basically took the first two interactions I had he took people that had no business even being taken through a sales process. The first person to the very end of the sales process, just like it was a no, but it was an incredible clip. It was an incredible situation. And then the second one, he took a girl who had no situation, no interest at the beginning, completely through the buying process to a yes. And it just blew my mind of what was really possible because the theory is the theory, but then you see it in real life and you're like, wow, he just took someone who had no business being sold completely from a, like get the hell out of here to a yes in like two minutes. In this clip, I think it's cool because I'm gonna knock in front of some amazing women, but they're kind of green in their sales journey and um, you'll see what happens, but it ends up really cool. Essentially from the psychology of the homeowner, the homeowner is thinking the entire time, I'm waiting for a brief moment to just say not interested. The biggest thing you have to realize when you're at the door is that the homeowner, even if they're super nice people, they're just droning out. They're in their drone state. And what essentially is happening is they open the door and 99% of the situations, they're essentially, even if they don't interrupt you, they're just being polite and they're waiting for a split second where you have a brief pause where they can pop in and say not interested. And essentially they're on their toes, just waiting waiting, waiting to pop in to say not understood. And the biggest thing you can do is break sales patterns, break preoccupation and get the homeowner hooked. So now they're on their heels, listening. Do you guys ever, like, have you ever guys had um, a situation just where there's a dude that comes up and like speak to you? And for whatever reason, like the vibes are just a little off. Mm -hmm. So you just say like, I have a boyfriend. Mm -hmm. Like even though maybe you guys like don't have a boyfriend. That's what happens at the door. And the homeowners just say default not interested, I have a guy, my husband does it, all that stuff, even though that might be and probably is necessarily not true at all. It's just a self-defense mechanism. It's pretty unquantifiable, but we've all been there in a sales situation where the homeowner is just not interested and it's just this weird, creepy vibe. And what happens is when you start to get a bunch of no's in a row, you start to have a bit of a no face and the homeowner can realize that. And so it's really important, as unquantifiable as it is, to be able to get into a super positive winner mindset where what happens is the homeowner just starts to fall into your frame and it's so unquantifiable, but the homeowner just falls into your frame. And then what happens is you're just like a magician at the door. The homeowner just says yes. It's unquantifiable. You don't know why they just say yes. If you're in a court of law and there's a woman typing on the transcript, it's the same words you're saying. But what happens is when you're in that amazing winner mindset, the homeowner just falls into your frame. Versus the counterpoint to that is when you're feeling a bit creepy, a bit scammy on the street, maybe you haven't made any sales, you're a bit droopy, you start to believe the homeowner's objections. What happens is the homeowner just gets repulsed. And then sometimes when you guys have those conversations, you realize maybe two minutes in or whatever, you're like, oh, this guy like isn't actually maybe a weirdo, like he at least maybe can like continue with the convo or maybe gets my number, all that stuff. So we need to get the homeowner from, I have a boyfriend, just to the situation of like, huh, huh, just to listen to the presentation. And that's what a lot of sales is. It's not even selling the homeowner. It's not even making the sale. It's taking the sale as far as you can make it. Because even a guy like Jordan Belfort, Alex Ramosi, they don't sell every person, but what they do do is they take every single person as far down the sales process as they can. And that's evident in the, huh? Like you want to get the homeowner to the, huh? Because a lot of times you can't even get them. And that in itself is a sale to get the homeowner to the, Huh. But you can only do that by breaking your sales pattern, so that's super important. And the goal isn't necessarily to close every single person. It's just to take every single person as far down the sales process as possible. And more important than learning a script, although yeah, for sure, a script is important. It's about understanding the frameworks of the sale so that you can make micro adjustments just depending on the situation. Because if you just remember the script, then it's just a memorization thing where within a situation where there's nuance, you're like, oh, well, what's the script? No, it's not about the script. 
It's about learning the frameworks underneath the script so that you can adapt for the nuance in the situation. Like you guys are all like very smart, very articulate probably. Think very simply on the front end of the presentation because it's not a, like a logical thing we have to solve. It's just like, it's just like a dance. They're gonna say what they're gonna say. And a very interesting thing is actually that I noticed the dumbest people do really well at sales and the smartest people do really well at sales. But the mid-tier midwits where you're kind of like overthinking a little bit, you're not sure, that's when you actually get stuck in sales. And the reason I noticed the like maybe socially uncalibrated people actually do really well is because they ignore a lot of the social cues, which allows them to push forward in the sale and not actually get too defensive and just like explain the situation when you get your first no. And then the really, really ultra smart people, kind of like the bell curve, they understand that and so they purposely ignore and misdirect at the beginning of the sale. Meanwhile, the people in the middle, they kind of get confused and they're, they're explaining all the time and it's always a logical endeavor which actually really hurts the sales process. Does that kind of make sense? Before we kind of get out there to knock and I'll show you guys a couple things. Do you guys have any questions aside from that? Would you say that like saying neighbors' names or like making up names or whatever you say, like if it's true or not, like definitely helps the situation, like saying names? Yeah, it okay. definitely does. So I don't actually like to lie. I just like to get the first one as quick as possible and then say their name over and over. And then what you can also do, this is like a little sales trick. When you leave the home, you get the homeowner's name, Megan. Cool, I was just talking to Megan. And then you go into the presentation. Even if they didn't buy it? Even if they yeah, because you're not lying. You're just saying, yeah, uh, yeah, I just popped over from Megan's house. And then do you know Margaret as well? Yes. 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 The social proof is so important and that's why I actually think it's really important to use home base is because in home base there's a door knocking app but it's also linked to your invoices and your jobs and your payment collection so it's super incredible where if you think about it if your sale rate let's say is 10 percent cool you going into a new neighborhood a fresh neighborhood is 10 percent you've sold no one it's 10 percent well what is your theoretical sale percentage if you've sold every single person on the street except for one probably like greater than 10%, right? It might be 11, it might be 50, but it's greater than 10%. So what can you conclude from that? Well, you can conclude that social proof is really important. If there is an element of uncertainty and lack of trust and authority with the sales guy, if you've done every single person on the street, what that does is it builds and it removes that uncertainty. And what is certainty? Well, certainty is just the lack of uncertainty. And when you remove all uncertainty, all that's left is a void of certainty. So that's why it's super important to drop names and drop a ton of social proof in your presentation. I have like a mental question. Like, yep. so you said like you're going in it like at an eight and then you slowly start going down, like not letting yourself go there. But what if you're like going in it at a two? <laughs> yeah, are you saying you're at a two right now? No, I'm not saying I'm at a two right now, but I was at a two like on Monday. Yeah. Are you like always an eight? No, that's a great question. I think there's things you can do to set yourself up to be an eight. Right. The night before, you kind of just have to be mentally prepared to wake up and knock. Like, you know that kind of like little bit of anxiety you get? Yeah. I still just get that and I've knocked like, I've made like 10,000 like sales and I still kind of get a little bit anxious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just like mentally prepare. And then in the morning, try and limit all your stress and stuff. Because sometimes I get like in a fight, like with my brother or something in the morning and it just like, uh, just drains me. A big revelation I had was that sales is a skill and then recruiting, managing, training, that's also a skill. And a lot of people think just because they're really good at sales, they're gonna be a great sales trainer, a great manager of people, but that's so far from the truth. Wayne Gretzky was the greatest hockey player of all time, but he was a kind of a bad coach for the Coyotes. And what happens is you go on a journey of, first of all, you're unconsciously competent, i.e. Michael Jordan was the baddest ass basketball player of all time, but he couldn't necessarily explain why he was actually a good basketball player, why he did what he did. He was just really good. He was unconsciously competent. But then if you want to duplicate yourself, because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you're a good sales guy. Can you train, recruit, and manage 100 other sales guys to get a ton of leverage in your business to do 100x the sales? Well, that's how you 100x, not by 100xing your sales ability because your sales ability kind of peters off. Can you do $3,000 a day? Yeah. Can you do $4,000 a day in window cleaning? Yeah. Can you do five? Yeah. But after that, like, can you get seven? There's so much that goes into getting 7K a day from 5K a day. That's really hard, almost impossible to do. It rarely happens. But for you to do 5K a day personally, but then 100K a day uh, with your sales guys, and I've never done 100K a day, but I've done 20, 25K a day, it's actually easier to do that. But you can only do that by duplicating yourself 
And you do that by first you're unconsciously competent and then you start to become consciously competent where you can actually articulate, teach and transfer your skill to someone else. Like it's unquantifiable, but when you guys are on, there's this thing that makes people just fall into your like frame and you're the boss on the door. And then the same words, there's this thing where homeowners just get like this weird, creepy thing. It's the same with like a guy when there's just like a dude, it's just like weird. And it's not quantifiable because he's not saying anything weird. He's just like weird. Yeah. It's the same thing at the door. Mm -hmm. And then that makes you kind of go down a rabbit hole and then you're like, I suck. And then I want to, you know, just kill myself. And then, you know, and I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so limit, so limit the distractions in the morning and just play some awesome music, get in the state. And then also, when you're on the doors, you guys need to be free from outcome. And especially at the beginning, like LeBron James, when he first starts, he can shoot a three. Except if you're first starting, you're not going to hit a three like your first shot. It's like you guys don't go to the gym and just do your max. You warm up, you get the blood flowing. And it's unreasonable to assume that everyone is just going to be amazing socially right off the gate. That's just not like how life works. There's social like, calibration, there's confidence. So when you guys go and you start, I would use, like, literally it's silly. Miss, good morning. Morning. <laughs> like, it's silly, but you want to just talk to everyone on the street. Like, that was silly, but it made everyone laugh. It made everyone feel at least a half a percent better. Everyone on the street that drives by, so silly, we're waving at them. We're being so, like, so happy that it's almost weird. They're like, wait, why is he so happy? And it's almost like we, like, force the happiness on ourselves. So I try to do that stuff where I try to control it because if we don't, then we're just at the whim of if we sell, then we're happy. But that's like uncontrollable. Like even I'm really good, but I don't sell sometimes. And then what, am I gonna be like sad because of that? So try to just like, like those little things like speaking to people on the street, waving, and every like door, like even if it's a no, there's really like two outcomes. It's either a sale or it's you spiral your state upward positively by having a great interaction. Miss, no worries, you have a great day. And then just leave. When you're a door-to-door -door sales guy, a lot of people don't realize this, but it's kind of like you're in a fishbowl. And oftentimes what happens is a homeowner that you talk to when you knock their door, you don't realize this, but they've actually seen you on the street for like one or two times because if you're knocking all day and it's like 6 p.m., the homeowners may be seeing you at 10, at one, maybe they're walking the dog. What you can do is you can actually, when someone's walking by their dog, when they're walking on a walk, they're on a run, just wave to them, say hi. Because chances are, if they're there, or even if they're driving that area, they probably live in that area, especially if it's a suburban neighborhood. So talk to everyone. And then what happens is later on in the day, it's almost like you see them for the second time, even though it's the first time, but they saw you, you know, talking to someone else. There's a lot of social proof. And if you do that, you actually start to hook the homeowner and then you get much better reactions at the door. Yeah. But I'm like just really struggling to like. She gets a lot like, of hard houses. Like. Yeah, like mm -hmm. I, just, I feel like the luck thing. Like obviously I have mm -hmm. work to do. Like obviously, yep. but I just I feel like I just want to know. Like, did you start out having like with a tough go, or like how did your how did you get like kind of to where you are? I know it's been a long time. It's been six days for me, but like <laughs> yeah, I just really need some like. No, to be honest, things. like I sucked at the beginning. Yeah, I'll awesome. tell you a story. So I used to sell lawn services. I was so nervous and basically what the pitch was essentially was, hey sir, I noticed the lawn was a little bit thin and compacted, blah, blah, blah. So I didn't, like that was too much stimulus. So I wrote thin and compacted on my, literally on my fucking arm. Yeah. So I was like, hey sir, the lawn looks a little bit thin and compacted, I swear, it's really bad. And one of the doors, my first like five, I forgot uh, like what aeration was, like the word. So I was like, hey sir, we're doing the, eh. Uh, we're, we're poking the holes. <laughs> and then he was like, aeration? And I was like, yeah, that's it. That's what we're doing. I think about all the time, how many amazing door-to-door -door representatives are lost in the first couple weeks because there's shit training and bad resources, no motivation, no inspiration by the leadership. I worked out, but it was because I had amazing mentors that helped me. There are a lot of people that are maybe similar to me that just after one or two weeks just quit because they had really bad mentorship. So it is your duty as a leader of a company, as a sales trainer, as a player coach, as a sales manager to help your people be the best sales people they can be. And it is a juxtaposition because you want to go on the doors. You want to lead from the front on one hand. But on the other hand, that is an inherently selfish activity, i.e. there's always more doors you can hit. 
which takes away from the team. That's a selfish activity. On the other hand, sales management, sales leadership, that is a selfless activity because you can always make one more call to your team. You can always give one more training, one more lesson. And it's really hard to do both. And oftentimes the best sales guys are spending all the time on the doors and it's good for showing guys and motivating guys, but it's not good for teaching guys. So I think that people would be better off actually exclusively sales training and helping, not selling because the selling takes away from the coaching. I think everyone just like is on their journey and why don't we knock a little bit together? And I think like maybe you're just putting some expectations on yourself. Like at the end of the day, you're starting a new skill and people just make the air of assuming because, you know, you have a great like friend group, you know, how to like speak to people that it's, they are just going to be great. And that's kind of the equivalent of just assuming a tall black guy is going to be an NBA -er. when it's like, maybe there's a foundation there to work on. Yeah. Except this is like a niche skill. Yeah. It's a very niche thing. Yeah. So you have the foundation maybe, but it doesn't mean that you're just gonna be incredible off the bat. And you putting yourself uh, like those expectations on you is like hurting you. I cannot reiterate that enough. People at McDonald's get trained for days and weeks to make burgers, to make fries, to make things at McDonald's. But then people think that just because they're the funny guy in school that they're just gonna crush door to door. Door to door is a niche skill and it takes time. And with the proper mentorship, leadership, and proper inspiration and why, you can crush. But if you judge yourself doing anything of your first week, you're gonna be really disappointed. And that's why it's important to have process goals, not outcome goals. You know, if I start skateboarding or like becoming a wood smith that does fucking wood or anything, I'm gonna suck at the beginning. And if I judge myself off that, then I'm gonna be really disappointed. And then I see, I get so many DMs where people see me knocking and I make it look effortless just because I've done it for a long time. And they compare their door six to my door 85,000. So give yourself the time to do a new skill because you can be incredible if you just put in the time. So um, if you're okay with it, I guess we'll knock and you can let me know where to go and I can knock with a few of you and we can have a great day. Um, did you guys kind of see us like we're literally right behind you guys? No. We're helping them to scrub down all the actual windows um, mm -hmm. and the frames and the sills because the dirt kind of sits. Yeah. And the reason everyone's getting it done kind of around the corner, we're given a bit of a discount for dudes with backwards hats. <laughs> My goodness, sir, you have a backwards hat. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. What I'll do so you at least know, go around and count the windows and just give you a quick price, just so you know. Yeah, and my okay, name is all good. Of I'm not sure way. if I can do it today, but uh, I would like to know the price for sure. Cool, I'll count it up. I'll be back in 30 seconds for okay, you. Perfect. Cool. Thanks. Making homeowners laugh at the front of the door. There's definitely a difference between just having the conversation rudderless and like yapping and stuff, but just breaking the preoccupation, getting them to laugh. Like that's, those are, those are very like canned jokes too that you can tell every door, stuff like that. And you don't have to necessarily copy, but you can find your own frameworks of what kind of works. Just make them laugh and then go into the presentation. Okay, sir, I love the setup, eh? On the corner. <laughs> There's just a lot of work. Um, do you want to throw on the shoes? I just noticed something on the left side. Do you want to just throw on the shoes and I'll just show you? Awesome, Daniel. Um, I'm Oliver. It's nice to meet you. Uh, just make sure the windows are all closed and then I'll send you a text when we're all finished. Perfect. Awesome. We're going to make you super happy, sir. See you soon. Bye bye. When we make a sale, social proof is super important. So you want to say this guy's name. Okay. And every person that you talk to, every sale, like every door that you talk to, even if you don't sell them, and by the way, you should track this on home like base mm -hmm. and write down their names. Okay. Like even if you don't sell someone, hey, I was just talking to like Daniel. Do you know the guy like right beside you guys? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure like what accent he has. He has kind of a crazy accent, hey? Yeah, anyways, we're doing um, a couple. I just talked to him. I also talked to Margaret. Mm -hmm. We're doing all this. You're not lying, you're ethical, but you're also using the, because people aren't gonna be mean to like friends. Mm -hmm. Like to be honest, if I'm at a bar and I'm trying to talk to women, sometimes mm -hmm. if you maybe don't know me, you guys may be rude to me, which is just like, it is what it is. Yeah. But now that you know me, mm -hmm. you would never be rude to me because I'm like a friend of a friend. True. It's the same thing with the homeowners. Mm -hmm. They will never be mean to you or greatly like reduce it mm -hmm. if you pump the social proof or perceived uh, like social proof around you. Mm -hmm. So use that to your advantage. Hello. Morning, sir, how are you? Yeah, good you like, like you're just about to play around? Yeah. Okay, well, I'll be quick. I'm Oliver. Did you kind of see us yesterday at all or today? No. We're just helping them to scrub down all the actual windows and the frames and the sills. The reason everyone's getting it done is because we're given a bit of a discount for dudes who are just about to go play golf. <laughs> My goodness, sir, I think that's you. What I'll do super quick, go around, count the windows, and just give you a quick price, just so you know. And my name's Oliver, by the way. I'll be 30 seconds for you. Right. 
cool. Hey, sir, I love the setup back there, eh? You guys have a nice like view. We do all the windows. I also noticed if you wanted to take one step with the socks, just so you can see one thing. And then yeah, as soon as we're done, I'll send you a text. You can come uh, just like home like tonight to make sure it looks good. And then is the number for me to send you a text a 403 or a 587? 780. Cool, 780. I'm Oliver, enjoy the round and then we'll send you a text when we're all finished for you. How much? Um, it'd be with the discount, come to 279. 279. Okay, yeah. Cool, awesome, see you soon, sir. People don't need to say yes for them to buy. And the reason I first, so crazy to me. What? the reason I first thought of that we, was because two and a half years ago we first started to knock with the camera, and I wanted to show the world the best practices in like door to door. Mm -hmm. And we had our first day. We sold like I don't know, like twenty jobs or something. And then like David was like, dude, because he has no like sales experience like doing this. He's like, dude, they didn't say yes any like they never said yes. How? And it was because you have to think about sales like in some ways a compliance ladder in that by them just not objecting to the next step, they allow you to go to the next step. So this was absolutely wild. And just being honest with you guys, this sale is like, for me, a four out of 10 complexity. Like it's nothing crazy, but that's what I'm saying. For these girls that have just started, this was mind blowing. And the clothes that I used was, he never said yes, but at the very end, I kind of like, I took him through a couple loops. And I was like, cool. So when I send you a text when we're all finished, do I send it to a 403 or 780? Head down, shut the fuck up. Wait, wait, 780. And all the girls are like, whoa, I've never seen that. And that's why I think it's super important to knock in front of greatness because you don't know what's possible until you see it in person. Yeah. I have one last question. Yeah. It's like very, very broad and you don't have to answer it, but like, I know you like usually, usually mentor like men, mm -hmm. but do you think like there's like a difference between being like a man sales person and then like a woman? Like, do you think there's like advantages of both or like? I definitely think there's advantages of both. I think that women probably get less like sales patterns of less people being like rude initially. Okay, yeah. I think it's a lot easier to just be like really short with me than just with a girl that yeah. looks awesome at like, the door. Like, I don't know if this is like a stereotype, but I feel like maybe like a like a guy, like guy to guy, like maybe a guy's like, okay, like this guy know, knows what he's doing just mentally, like, oh, just cause he's a guy, maybe like we're not as reliable. Yeah. So I just feel like we need to build that like rapport yeah. a little bit. That's why I think it's really important for you guys to drop as much social proof as possible. Mm -hmm. So even if you haven't any people in this area, you're in the intro, the first step is you're breaking the preoccupation, have you seen us, whatever, we're doing all this stuff, social proof, talk about your experience and your customers, which I think you can just weave into little like talk tracks. And just try to have a great conversation, but lead the conversation in the direction of the close because rudderless yapping isn't good either. However, if you can structure it as one sentence overcome, one sentence close, and you loop, you guys will crush it. So I went two for two to start the day and then we did a bunch of other training and sales training and had some actually really rough interactions, but it was really awesome to show what is possible and that even I get really bad reactions, but yeah, we did awesome and I'm super excited to motivate, inspire and lead so many awesome women in sales.